forms are fundamental into any web application, right? You need to be able to collect data and put it into your backend and your database. React is no different. So let's go ahead and take a look at our actual input and, and, and just generally how we should handle forms using React. Now this is a super basic form, right? Just one input, one button, that's it. That's all we're gonna really be looking at. And the question is, how do you handle a form? And how do you actually handle what this data is? So the first thing is you probably might be familiar with this on submit idea, right? So when a form is submitted, how do we prevent it from doing its default action? On submit is how that's done in React, just like that. So on submit, of course, I'm going to have it being handled by one of my methods in this component. And in this case, it's gonna be handle submit. And it's literally just this dot handle submit. That will allow me to use the event so I can pass that in as a parameter here. And we can prevent whatever the default action is of that form, right? So even if the method is, you know, post, like a lot of forms end up being, um, we can just completely ignore that. That default will do that as you may have seen before. Um, so that's how we handle the preventing of the action going through. But how do we actually get the data, right? So there's a few different ways on how we could go about getting the data. But what I'm gonna do is the way that I find to be fairly easy and fairly straightforward for things going forward as well. So the thing I'm gonna do is initially set a constructor. So we wanna set a constructor with our props and I'll do this.state and set it equal to my default values. Now in this case, I have an input with a name of name. So like, you know, we could do first name or full name. You could do all sorts of things in here. It, that part doesn't really matter. It's just making sure that you know that those are actually different. Um, so let's actually do that. I'll just say full name, okay. So this.state full name is null. Okay, so I'm, I'm making these to being the exact same and that's because of this handle input change here. Um, so since I'm using this state, what I'm also gonna do is put in a constant for this full name and say this.state. Okay, so, so we can actually render out whatever that ends up being right here. I'm just gonna put a paragraph, full name is just like that. Now, the reason I'm showing you this part is to show you how this data binding works, um, which is pretty pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave it in as full name, and now we've got this handle input change. So what is the event that we have to handle for this input change? Well, it's really simple, it's on change, right? So on change, whenever this event happens, we want to call this dot handle input change. And of course, that's gonna bring in an event as well. Um, and you could do event.prevent default. It, it probably doesn't actually matter because the input changing doesn't really have an, an, uh, an event that it needs to prevent. But I mean, sometimes you just get in that habit of doing it, so that's fine. Um, okay, so now that I've got this, what is this event? Well, so if I console log the event, I can actually see what's going on, but I already know what it is. And it's console log, and we do event.target.name. That will give us this this value, whatever that value is. And I can also do console log event target dot value. So this is allowing me to get the name of the input and the value. Now the reason you do it this way is so that I can have 15 different inputs or however many inputs I want. Um, as long as the names are different, the value will always be correct, right? So we'll always get the right value and uh, the target value. It's not the same for every kind of form um, HTML tag. So like inputs, this works really, really well. Text areas, this works really, really well. Um, so let's just keep it with those. The, the input type of text, input type of password, those all work very well. Okay, so now that I've got this handle input change, what I need to do is change my state based off of what's coming in to the input because I need this full name portion here. And that's why we named the state aspect the same as the input. Because what I'm gonna do now is this.set state curly brackets, and I need to set the full name to what the value is. So event.target.value. Um, now, of course, I need this to be able to work not just on you know this one input, this one text input, 
but on all of them. So we have to change this syntax to being brackets, so square brackets, event.target.name. This allows me to set the key for the key value pair in this, this dictionary that's coming through here. Um, so that using those brackets does that. That's, that's the purpose of that. Um, so now that we've got this saved, um, I can actually see what's going on. So let's go into the actual item here and I'll say full name is Justin Mitchell, that's me. And we see that the data is bound together, right? So I didn't, I didn't set a value on here like you can. You can say value equals to something, right? So I can actually put the value equal to the full name as well, like I made that state and that actually doesn't change anything. Um, other than if I set my default value, full name in here, this would change something. So I save it and now it actually pre-fills this data. So that's how you can both initialize it with empty or if you're going to change something, you could change it with that initial constructor. Or if you were really gonna do this to actually edit like some data in the back end, you would do component did mount, and this is where you would set the state for whatever values you're wanting to pre-fill. So full name and Justin, right? That's where you'd actually set the value, not in the constructor. The constructor, you would use those empty values um, most likely. Okay, so the component did mount, that's where I'd have, you know, maybe an API call to to get some data that I needed. Uh, but the final thing is this handle submit. Since we have this state, we now can say that our data, so like const data equals to this dot state, and we can just console log whatever that data is. Okay, so I'm gonna leave out this component to mount. Uh, so now that I've got that, let's go ahead and just take a look. So this is how the form would actually work. So I, I type in my name, I hit send message or whatever, and then I console log. Now it's console logging a lot of stuff. So let's actually get rid of all of these console logs and only have the one and say final data is, so we save that and um, we've got we've got this value property not shouldn't be null. Um, so let's just leave it as an empty string, the same thing. Um, but yeah, definitely when you do inputs, that's what you're gonna wanna do. And that's the nice thing about React, it'll give you a warning for that. Okay, so I put my name in, I hit send message and final data is, there's my final data. So this data I could actually send now to a backend service of some kind, right? Whether it's with Django or something else like Firebase, th this is where you would actually run your API calls, which we're not gonna cover, but this is a very basic way on how you handle a form and submit. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. It's really easy to do, and it's, it's gonna be definitely useful in the future. We're gonna cover a lot more on forms, so stay with us. Make sure you like and subscribe to get everything because again, we're covering so much on React and also forms. So I really wanna work with you guys um, for the future to get this, this really understood. Thanks for watching, see you next time.